Where does Earth end and outer space begin? There isn't a hard line. The atmosphere just fades away. So we created a boundary, the Karman line, floating about 62 miles or 100 kilometers up. But the story behind that line is a weird one. In the 1950s, scientist Theodore von Karman asked at what altitude a plane needs to fly so fast for lift that it's basically in orbit. His math landed near 84 kilometers, about 52 miles. But since people love round numbers, it became 100 kilometers or 62 miles. Below this Karman line, aerodynamic lift keeps you up. Above it, you need orbital speed or you're just falling. But the U.S. side-eyed the 62-mile mark. To give early pilots their astronaut wings on shorter flights, NASA and the U.S. military picked 50 miles, about 80 kilometers. So the debate continues. A neat 62 miles versus a practical 50 miles. The atmosphere has layers that just get thinner and thinner. The lowest layer, the troposphere, contains our clouds and planes. Higher up in the mesosphere, most meteors burn up. And the final layer, the exosphere, is so thin it stretches almost halfway to the moon. This means Earth's atmosphere is technically bigger than Earth itself. Who cares if the line is 50 or 62 miles up? Lawyers do. A country has sovereignty over its airspace, but outer space is considered an international domain. So is a spy balloon at 37 miles up an invasion? The answer determines if you send fighter jets or a strongly worded email. Satellite companies and future space tourists also need to know where the rules change. So where does space begin? Science offers the 62-mile Karman line as a tidy good enough answer. Politics and practical purposes keep the 50-mile line in play. And nature? It just smirks, fading the sky from blue to black without a single hard edge. The boundary isn't a wall, it's a slow breakup between gravity and speed. If that blurred edge messed with your head, smash like and subscribe.